This is Dr. Randall Bell, who's an economist, sociologist, and who's been called by some in the media as the master of disaster. But before we get into that, I want to say welcome to the show. And I'm glad that we finally hooked up. You know, this isn't a perfect science. So when things go wrong, you just got to go with the flow. But now getting back, to what, getting back to what we were talking about, what is the title, Master of Disaster? And what does that mean? Well, I got that name from the LA Times. They did an article to profile my career. And, and the first line of the article was, you know, Master of Disaster. First, you know, Stuart, I didn't like it. I, uh, I was trying to kind of squelch it, but my friends and family were kidding me. And I just said, you know, like you just said, you go with it. So here yeah. we are. <laughs> so why, why don't you explain what you do? And well, what I do is I study disasters. I've been, yeah, I've been doing it since 1986. Uh, everything, I'm in Southern California. And so I started off with landslides and earthquakes and wildfires. And then the whole O.J. Simpson case was literally down my street. And I was uh, ended up helping Mr. Brown with that case with uh, the, the condominium. But what I do is I measure losses and property values and that's taken me to the World Trade Center and the Bikini Atoll and Hurricane Katrina and OJ and John Bonnet Ramsey and hundreds of cases. Yeah, but I, I guess I asked the wrong question. I'll, I wanted to talk to you about trauma mm. because that's something that sort of sneaks up on people and they don't even realize they're traumatized so they've stepped over that line and then it's hard to walk. It's not as easy to walk back as it is to step over. So first of all, could you explain what is trauma? Trauma is anything that knocks us down. Uh, something may not traumatize you, but it might traumatize me. So it's not a competition, but if it's a disease, a death, a divorce, a destruction, disaster, they all seem to start with a D, but anything that knocks us down. But we've all been traumatized by the pandemic, by events like 9-11 and January 6th. But what about people that were carrying a lot of emotional baggage prior to that, that traumatized them? And now this is on top of them. Do they experience something different than somebody who is just going with the flow and recognizes this and everything in their life is on an even keel? So they can deal with this as just a one issue traumatizing event. It could be, but trauma is so complex. I mean, some people that have been traumatized before might, you know, have COVID come along and they're better equipped to handle it because they've had trauma to deal with before. While other people seem very even keel, kind of fall apart or, or, or not. I mean, it, the thing about trauma is you re it really kind of exposes what people are really all about. And they may seem really buttoned up and put together before, but the trauma really, you know, it's kind of like you don't know what people are made out of until you put them in some hot water. And then, and then you see, it's like tea. You see, how good or, you see how good it is. How do you recognize the signs of somebody who's been traumatized? A lot of it's uh, physiological, where your heart rate is elevated, your uh, pulse is elevated, your blood pressure, your breathing's heavier. You can, you can actually measure a, a lot of trauma through just these kind of physical characteristics. Well, people who were suffering or traumatized by events in their life, and along came the pandemic, are they experiencing more and something different than, than somebody who's just dealing with life the way it is today? You know, by college age, 66 to 85% of us have been hit by a trauma. Every person's different and handles it differently. That's what I see over and over again. We have a great slogan called Dive, Survive, or Thrive. And I, is that, that's the name of your latest book, I believe. Well, the book's titled Post Traumatic Thriving, but. Yeah, it wasn't the, even close. Yeah, but, no, but but you're right, Stuart. The book is divided in three sections, Dive, Survive, and Thrive. But can you explain what you're talking about? Yeah, well, dive is where you get punched in the face and you're knocked down with whatever the trauma is, whether it's COVID or, or a medical condition or a disease, a divorce, you know, all kinds of stuff can punch us and knock us down. Uh, the survive stage is where you simply get back on your feet and kind of you know, get back what you had before. But the real book, the whole point of the book is to tap into the energy of the trauma and do something 
you know, really remarkable that you hadn't been doing before. And there's a lot of energy, a lot of fuel that comes out of trauma. So the idea is to tap into it. The book's about how to tap into that fuel and do something remarkable given given the, the whole experience. Well, supposing somebody does something remarkable and everybody is giving them that a boy, great, and you know, a pat's on the back, but inside he doesn't feel happy about it. Is that because he's been traumatized by succeeding? Yeah, well, so sir, what you just kind of mentioned is the classic mistake where where inside there's an internal war going on because of the trauma. So what we got to do is genuinely heal from it. And there's really two techniques to, to get us started to do that. One is grounding, deep breathing exercises that rewires the brain chemistry, literally. And the other one is sitting in the fire where you sit and talk about it with a trusted person, whether it's a therapist or a friend or, or whoever, but you can't bottle this stuff up inside. That's the classic mistake people make. And if you don't let it out, does it get worse? Or is there a compartment you can lock it away in and forget about it until you're ready to deal with it? Yeah, if you do, yeah, if you lock it up, it's going to get worse. Um, a lot of people get physically ill because of bottled up trauma. And uh, that's, that's just a reality. But you got to find the right person and maybe let it out gradually like a balloon. You don't pop the balloon and create a big explosion. You let it out gradually. But eventually you got to let it all out to the right person. That's for sure. And what if you don't? Yeah, well, that's where we get all the self-medication. That's where we get the alcoholism, the workaholism, <laughs> the drug addiction, all, all of that. You know, pick your pick your poison. It doesn't really matter. That's all masking unresolved trauma. If if we deal with the trauma, the, the we go we kind of transition from self-medication to self-care, where we're doing things that take care of ourselves in a healthy way. Um, so that's what's really going on with when you see someone who's addicted or alcoholic or, or all these things, uh, and I volunteer in prisons and jails, I see it all the time. Uh, what's really going on is an internal battle over unresolved trauma, particularly childhood trauma. I read a statement that I, that I got that I'd like to just quote. It's, I believe you are the gentleman that said it. And it says, I imagine a world where everyone has full access to the life skills we all need but are not always taught in school. Well, where I come from, the people that had those skills, whether they were wealthy or poor, economically didn't matter, they were called street smarts. And I think professionals in mental health now, now call that critical thinking. Hmm. Are we talking about the same thing? <laughs> That's great, I never thought of it that way. But yeah, street smarts, is a matter of you know critical thinking and uh, critical thinking. I, the number one point on critical thinking is an open construct where you have an open mind. You're willing to consider whatever information is rather what what we call ignorant dismissals. So when it comes to trauma, we have to have an open construct to say, hey, I'm open to change. I'm not going to just you know keep wallowing in this unresolved and self medicate in these unhealthy ways. That's just not a good path. Let, you know, let's have an open construct. Whether well, street smarts or critical thinking, I think that's a brilliant com you know comment, Stuart. But we gotta we gotta do something to change, or we're gonna you know end up just doing the same thing and and keep uh, spiraling downward. But until a person comes to the decision, hey, I want to change, you know, the path I'm on is really uh, ignorant and and leading to self destruction. Uh, and I see other people changing, then you get a little, uh, you know, breakthrough moment where you can start, you know, making some inroads, just, you know, sitting down for 10 minutes a day and deep breathing really starts rewiring the brain and starts can even really that in of itself can start the process. So for people who might follow this because you're giving them the advice, but they're not quite sure. The thing is, the science is so good out of Harvard and Princeton and just uh, Oxford the UCLA, the, the science is so good in terms of the ability to make this transition. And I think for those who are a little more secular and want to see the proof, want to see the evidence, uh, the evidence is there. The stuff really works. I've seen homeless people get back on their feet, reclaim their lives, reconnect with their family, reconnect with their kids, you know, get a job and hold it down, get rid of the addictions. Um, you know, I've seen it, it the stuff really works. Um, so yeah, the evidence is there if somebody's willing to look at the evidence and that goes back to critical thinking. You gotta be open to the to new evidence. Well, one more topic I wanted to ask you about. 
What is Core IQ? It sounds very intriguing. Well, Core IQ, I was uh, the managing director at Price Waterhouse, and then it became Price Waterhouse Coopers. And we, I was hiring all these really brilliant, you know, scientists and and uh, technical people. Uh, but they they lacked like time management skills, negotiation skills. Frankly, some of them lacked basic table business manners. Um, so we would hire all these experts to come in, you know, miss manners and time management people and negotiation. They cost us 10, 15 grand a day to have these people come in. I thought, you know, you know what, this is so stupid um, because number one, this is not that difficult. And number two, um, everybody should know this stuff. I want my kids to know about this stuff and they don't teach us stuff in school. So Core IQ is you go online, coreiq.com. There's no charge. You don't never put in your credit card. You don't have to even put in your email address, but you can take this training on negotiation skills, time management, goal setting. There's a whole bunch of um, topics that's for free that we all need, but they're never taught in school. It's kind of kind of my pet peeve, kind of my solution to this whole, whole dilemma we got. Yeah, I think that's a great mission because I, I think if more people understand how the world really works, it'll work better. It's just that simple. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's not complicated. The thing about this stuff is, is that people think it's simple. It's too simple. It's not going to work. Well, it is simple, but it really does work. <laughs> you know, all you got to do is give it a, give it a shot. I believe that. And if people wanted to reach you and continue a conversation with you, how do they do that? Oh, I'm at drbell.com or coreiq.com and all lands you in the same place. And the books on Amazon, uh, Post Traumatic Thriving, it's everywhere. And uh, I'm easy to get a hold of. I love having these, these conversations. One more time, the name of the book. Post Traumatic Thriving. And then the subtitle is The Art, Stories, and Science of Resilience. Hey, there it is, folks. If you're interested, that's how you get it. And if you want to speak more to Dr. Bell, give him a call. He's easy to talk to. I want to say thank you for being on the show today. It was really an interesting conversation, and you answered a lot of questions that I had, so thank you. Hey, thanks, Stuart. Great to be with you.